It's time for What's Up This Week. Hi everyone and welcome to What's Up This Week, your weekly dose of facts and trivia from University Branch Library. So this week marks the anniversary of when the company NASCAR was officially incorporated on February 21st, 1948. NASCAR actually stands for National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing. It was founded by a gas station owner and amateur stock car racer, William H. G. France. The stock cars are actually large, late model sedans designed for the sport. The first NASCAR race was held in Charlotte, North Carolina in 1949. NASCAR administers the annual Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. It is regarded as the premier championship series of stock car racing. The season has typically begun in February and lasted until November and has often included over 30 races. In 2010, the NASCAR Hall of Fame opened in Charlotte, North Carolina. A panel of voters chooses five people a year, honoring drivers, owners, and other contributors to the company. For multiple reasons, NASCAR's popularity has lessened some since its formation, However, it still has a sizable and cheerful fan base that's supportive of the racers. All right, Daniel, what do you have for the folks this week? Thanks, James. This week, we're remembering the life of the Australian zookeeper who achieved worldwide fame by embracing the mantra of conservation through exciting education. The host of The Crocodile Hunter, Steve Irwin, was born on February 22nd, 1962. Crikey. When he was eight years old, his family moved to Beerwa, Queensland, and his parents opened the Beerwa Reptile Park. Steve grew up loving all wildlife, especially reptiles. He caught his first venomous snake, a common brown, at the tender age of six, and would often arrive late to school after convincing his mother to pull over so he could rescue a lizard off the road. By the time he was nine years old, Steve was helping catch small problem crocodiles. He always had an uncanny sixth sense when it came to wildlife and spent his life honing that skill. By 1980, the wildlife park was renamed the Queensland Reptile and Fauna Park. This was Steve's home and the place he loved the most. Here he worked countless hours caring for the wildlife and maintaining the grounds. As Steve's love for crocodiles grew, he spent months on end living in the most remote areas of far north Queensland, catching and relocating problem crocodiles for the Queensland government. He did all this with the company of his little dog, Suey. Steve developed crocodile capture and management techniques that are now utilized with crocodilians around the world. He took over managing the park on October 4, 1991, Two days later, he met Terry Raines, a visiting tourist. They were married in Eugene, Oregon. Instead of a honeymoon, the couple embarked on filming a wildlife documentary while relocating a problem crocodile in far north Queensland. The show was so successful that it turned into a series and the crocodile hunter was born. The TV series became an internationally broadcast wildlife documentary hit, which Steve hosted with his wife, Terry. Steve and Terry worked tirelessly to improve and expand the wildlife park. Renaming it Australia Zoo in 1998, their vision for the world's best zoo was coming to fruition. Steve's message of conservation through exciting education is achieved every day within the zoo. Steve treasured every opportunity to share his love for wildlife with his children, Bindi and Robert. He instilled in them the need to treat every living being with kindness. Steve was incredibly proud of his children and often said if he was to be remembered for anything, he hoped it was for being a good dad. In July 2006, Steve and Terry set out a 10-year business plan for their beloved zoo. Tragically, Steve passed away two months later at the age of 44 when he was pierced in the heart by a stingray barb while filming an underwater documentary film. Today, Terry, Bendy, and Robert continue to strive to achieve all of the goals Steve hoped to attain. Together, they continue to run Australia Zoo, which encompasses over 700 acres and employs over 500 staff. That's what I've got. What do you have for us this week, Megan? 
Hi everyone! This week's weird thing is that February 23rd is Curling is Cool Day. I'm not talking about curling your hair. Nope, I'm not talking about lifting weights either. Curling is Cool Day is all about the sport of curling. In case you didn't know, curling is the sport in which players slide stones over ice toward a target area which is divided into four concentric circles. Just like shuffleboard or bocce ball, the point is to get your stone as close to the center circle as possible while trying to knock the opposing team's stones further away. The closer you get your stone to the center, the more points you get. Curling originated in medieval Scotland, where it was played on frozen ponds during the winter. It is sometimes known as the roaring game because of the sound the stones make while traveling over the ice. The Royal Caledonian Curling Club was founded in 1838, and its members formulated the first official rules for the sport. Curling was first played in the Winter Olympics in 1998, and it continues to be a part of the Winter Olympics to this day. You can check it out in next year's games. Curling may be the sport which most embodies the spirit of good sportsmanship. And this makes a lot of sense to me as the sport has become particularly popular with Canadians, our friendly northerly neighbors. This good sportsmanship is often referred to as the spirit of curling. Curling teams congratulate their opponents when they make a good shot and they must never applaud the mistakes of their opponents. Winners are never overly exuberant in their victories. To celebrate Curling is Cool Day, you can educate yourself about the history of the sport or even learn how to play it. In March of 2018, New Yorker Magazine published an article titled Rocks on Ice, which is an interesting read, and you can access it for free on our website or via the Flipster app to learn a little more about the sport. If simply reading about curling isn't enough and you've just got to try it in real life, you can visit the Curling Club of Houston's website to learn more about their classes and events. Once again, thank you for watching and be sure to join us next week for more trivia from University Branch Library. Beep.